Jack, this is Elizabeth Pierce. Oh. Hi, Jack. I sure like your suit. It's great. <laughs> this is the first time I ever walked in here when someone else got the cold shoulder. We are here with Diane Cannon. Her fabulous new book. Dear Carrie, I read it. I loved it. Did you like it? It is so beautifully written. Thank you. And how you wove your childhood throughout the chapters. You were only married for three years? We were together six. Six. But married three, yeah. What an amazing, amazing thing. I loved the part where you've got the, the discussion about, well, we thought he was going to come play for our team. Right. And you say, after what happened last night, no way. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh, well, there were rumors about Kerry, but he had such an effervescence that he attracted men, women, children, all kinds of people. That our our uh, home life was very satisfactory. Yeah. A May-December romance. We like were, he was older than my father. How did your parents take that? They didn't. <laughs> they weren't for it, but after they came to know him, they loved him as much as I did. Did they? Yeah. My goodness, you look like you're about 14 yeah, right here. Yeah. So how, was, how old were you there? I was 23. Okay. Yeah. There's this wonderful piece where he is telling the story about how he learned from his father that his mother was not dead, in fact, but that she was put into a mental institution, and it's just, it's riveting. Elsie Leach, was that her name? Right. And, and you can tell through the book that it, it's something that just haunts him always. When Carrie was 10 years old, he came home from school one day and his mother, who he was very close to, wasn't at home. Where is mom? And his cousins had moved in the house because it was wartime and families clung together at that time. So his cousin said, your mom went to the seashore and he said, well, why wouldn't she take me? Maybe I'm a bad boy. Maybe she's angry with me. Maybe I did something wrong. Several months later, his father told him that his mother was dead, that she had died. And his father went off and had a baby with a younger woman, and Carrie wanted to live with them, but he was told there was no room. So he was he had a he had a rough childhood, and it wasn't until 30 years later when he got a call at the studio one day saying, this is your father, I need to talk to you. And Carrie flew to England, walked into a pub, saw his father, who he didn't recognize because of what drink had done to him. And that was so beautifully written. Thank the way you. you wrote that, beautifully written. That Thanks. Way. And that's when he found out that his mother wasn't dead. So that was a huge shock, um, devastating to him. And I think one of the demons, I think, I think it was the demon that he had the, the hardest time dealing with in his whole life. I think that's why he grappled with LSD. The anger, the confusion, the, I mean, she was angry and had every right to be. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, Being terrible, locked terrible, up terrible, in a place. Terrible. And it was very easy. To, and so here the Archibald leech that she knows turns into the gorgeous, successful Cary Grant that she does not recognize right. coming in. Very, that's it's right. just heartbreaking. One of the cuter parts here is uh, you see him on the set with another gorgeous actress and they're doing a scene and you watch him kiss her and they have to do another take and another take and you write, my God, I could feel it down to my toes. And you said Toe it was nails. the first time that you started, you hadn't felt jealous before. I was jealous, absolutely. I don't want nobody messing with my man. Isn't that <laughs> something? I felt it, I knew it was just acting, but it yeah, bothered me. Sure, of course it is, speaking of chocolate, um, there's, there's a scene, you know which scene I'm talking about. Well, there's a scene, you're rifling through this drawer, and all you want is something sweet, and he sees you, and he goes ballistic. <laughs> that was his candy drawer. You didn't mess with his candy drawer. You don't mess with my man, you don't mess with my candy drawer. Well, I, have to, I have to know. I found, I found that shocking. I found that shocking. Well, I think, you know, he was still, in so many ways, a little boy. Mm never been allowed to grow up. And he know? accused you of being the little child after that. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. You silly child, he called me yeah. all the time. Yeah. yeah. But I have to tell you that the first half of this book has a romance that rivals none. It's not just a downer book, and this is not a book that slams or bashes Cary Grant in any way. Oh, no. This is a book that uh, I want people to love him more when they've read it, because they'll understand his heart. And you know what we do in life? We so often make gods out of people. Mm. 
and I think I did that. I think I did that about Cary Grant. But when we learn that everybody has stuff to work through, we all have feet of clay. Nobody's perfect. Put them on a pedestal. There's nowhere to go but down from there. That's right. right. That's right. The reason I wrote this book is for everyone everywhere who is loved and lost and is just afraid to love again. There's so many people walking around with broken hearts who are afraid to open up again. So. That's why I wrote the book. That was the motive. But now let, let's talk a little bit about um, everyone, of course, knows the great movies that he was in, North by Northwest. Heaven can wait. Did you enjoy, did you like that as yeah. much as you seem to? That was that was a, that was a, 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 a really good movie. Oh, Warren Beatty is a brilliant producer. He also directed co-directed that with that, Buck Henry. It was underrated in my opinion. It was that good. I, I don't think it got the acclaim it deserved. Well, we all won a lot of awards with it. You think, yeah, yeah, and it made a lot of money. But I'm glad you think it was even better. Than oh, that. I I thought it was one of the best <laughs> of all time. I really good. did. How long did it take? Six years. Oh, no wonder it's so beautifully written. It is absolutely beautiful. Go get it. It's it's terrific. And and I understand. Is it um, your motivation for writing it was a friend of yours, a very very famous lady, Mrs. Kennedy, said you should write this book. Yes, Jacqueline Kennedy came to me. So did Swifty Lazar, and said I should write a book, but that, that I didn't even have to mention Carrie. I just got a call from Los Angeles. It's number two on the bestseller oh, list now. Congratulations. Uh, so, and Jackie's was first, and now she's not first place in it, but it's, well, it's a thrill. Congratulations, thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Go out and get it, dear Carrie. Thank you. Oh, thank you.